Okay, it's time for Legal Help Live because it's Wednesday and because you're watching 16 in Santa Monica, 36 in Los Angeles. We're the Legal Help Live team. Ralph here, Steve there. Welcome. Call us at 1-800-405-4222. That's a toll-free number, and the reason you want to do that is because that's how you get in to ask a legal question. If you get a legal question asked, then you get a legal question answered. Hey, Steve, what's up? Well, you know, it's sort of like bait and switch. I see you in the intros wearing a suit and tie. Yes. Looking I, like a I lawyer. Changed. And I see you now looking like uh, something else. So uh, I, I changed. Right on set, huh? Yeah, yes. So, you know, it, it's amazing what's going on. Somebody, there's, a, there's a, a lawsuit going on now before the United States Supreme Court. Uh, I'm owed $39, or at least I think I'm owed $39. Isn't that fun? And... Uh, I think it's from the phone company for it's something AT and T for something they did. And when I, when I signed up for AT and T, they made me sign a contract with them. Besides all the outrageous terms, etc., they overcharged me by thirty nine bucks. And the deal in the contract says that I can't sue them. Right. I can't take them to court. I got to arbitrate it, which means Correct. for thirty nine dollars, I've got to file an arbitration. Right. Pay fees, I guess, and spend a whole bunch of time down there to try and get my $39 back. So instead of doing that, I go to a lawyer, and the lawyer says, well, you know, there's uh, 10,000 or 100,000 of you that have done the same thing. How about a so, million of so you? So why don't we do a class action How about a million and of you? sue AT&T for $300 million instead of the $39. If we win, I get my $39 back. The lawyers get a bunch of money, and everybody gets their money back. Right. Uh, what, what, what's the problem with that? Well, well, I, I, it sounds good to me. Lawyers get paid. The consumer gets uh, re well, recompense, it, not it, just the one, but everybody who is similarly taken advantage of. So what's wrong with that? Well, it's called the class action. And in that same document that I have no negotiating power with, that I signed with AT&T, it says that I can't, ha I can't have a class action. So what they want me to do now is they want 100 or a million people to sue them for $39 separately. Right. Clogs the courts up, et cetera, et cetera. This case got all the way to the United States Supreme Court. So what's the court going to do? Um, and it's a California case, too. Yeah. Well, I'll get my $39 back. I know that. Yes. Whether everybody else does, I don't know. I think they're split right down the middle on it. Well, I, I want, uh, there's room on your coattails. I want to go along. Yeah, well. I had the same problem would, with at and you, you would think that the whole purpose of class actions is to uh, allow people to band together to collect money that they wouldn't collect, sure, even though they're owed it for right. the 39 bucks. I would hope the U.S. Supreme Court would see the light on that. Um, I don't know. Well, you never know, but we've, it'll, we will it, find out. It could change the entire effect of class actions in the United States. It absolutely could. Class actions is a very valuable tool because there are a lot of people who can't file a lawsuit. And here's they don't the have case. The time or the money to do here's it. Here's the case. It's 39 bucks. It's actually $30.32. Well, but with interest and all this other stuff. Interest and fees. It's 39 bucks. So we'll see. I mean, there are all kinds of class actions for uh, waging labor disputes and, and parking disputes and everything you can think of. So, what? You know, I, I'll bet everybody who's out there watching uh, is a potential plaintiff in a class action suit, and I'll bet a lot of people watching are actual plaintiffs in class action lawsuits, and they don't I even am. know it. I've gotten, I've gotten more than once. I've gotten my 45 cents in recovery, and you get a check from the federal court. I mean, court, I'm kind of part of that whole class action on the, on the screwed-up Toyota situation. Where, oh, that's right. I you mean, I, I just happened to be around when uh, they told me that everything was fine, and every day I'm reading the brakes are going out, the this is going out, the cars. So, I, I mean, I'm involved in one of those kind of class actions as a, as a uh, as member a of the class. As a consumer, exactly. Well, let's, uh, let's go to the phones and talk to some folks. How do you like that? I'm sorry, I didn't get eat the it? name. E Edith. 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 Oh, eat, Edith, not Edith. Edith. Oh, okay. Edith from San Pedro. Edith, where are you? I'm right here. Oh, hi. Hello, Edith. I, I thought I saw you there. What can we do for you today? Um, well, I have a quick question for you. Um, I'm a college student, and I let my mom borrow my car um, for her to go run her errands. And she was in the city of Wilmington. And there is a red light um, camera there. And uh -huh. by accident, she ran through it. And she let me know afterwards. And about a week ago, I just got a notice saying that I had to pay a fine since it was undermining the car. 
Oh. Or they want me to report who was driving my car. And I don't feel like I'm liable for paying that fine since it was my mom's fault. But then again, I don't want them to know who was driving my car. Um, so I just want to know if there's anything I can do about this ticket. So you don't want to turn your mom in, huh? No. Lots of kids would like to do that. Those are called snitch tickets. Yes. Where, where, uh, where, where you're not driving the car. And it's apparent that the photograph that they take, because when they do the, when they, when it's, in some places it's, it's video, in some places it's just pictures, but they get one picture showing the license plate, one picture showing uh, what, where your car was at the time that it was red, and then a picture uh, in the front showing the driver. If you're not the driver, you're not liable at all, period. That's the end of the story. And on the back of the ticket, uh, I think on the back of the, form they sent out to you, it says that. Uh, you do not have a legal obligation to tell them who is driving. On the other end, if you show up in court and the judge orders you, which he or she may or may not, uh, to give us the name of the person, uh, then you might be in contempt of court for not doing that. So, wow, what a great case. So, wow. This is going to be a great you test your, case. Well, Somebody it, going to jail for, for until, until when? Well, you, you make him stand until they answer who it is <laughs> or the statute of limitation runs. Now, you know, I don't know if that will happen. That may be sort of hyper-technical. But you don't have an obligation to, even though the form's fit, made out, to, uh, to tell him who is driving. Uh, in fact, you have a constitutional right to keep your mouth shut. That's right. So I guess the bottom line, the, the end of the story is, no, don't pay the fine. Contest it. Tell them that you're not the driver. Don't disclose who the driver was. And and if you show up in, and eventually may have to show up in court, just bring your driver's license and you and the judge will compare uh, 